Okay, now we're going to continue with another example of friend functions, but we're going to combine the idea of using friend functions with overloading operators, which we saw from a couple of examples ago. And I'm using the same example again that I used. I've just renamed it class example five, but this was just class example four that we used in the last example. Um, I have made a slight change to the main function here. I've uh, commented out the print statements and I've simplified what's output to be just when you compare two number two per, two of the person objects, it either says they're the same or they're not. So I just did that so there's not too much clutter on our output. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to actually uh, talk about this idea of overloading operators we see we had here. So we've seen here how to overload the operators um, equality as well as less than, um, and we've also seen how to do like friend functions like is equal three. Well, it turns out we could also do the same thing of, uh, of overloading an operator as a friend function. So what we could actually do here is we could do a call, say that there's a friend function called bool. So I'm going to do this instead of this one. Uh, and it's, I'm going to say it's an operator equality. Now, when I did the equality operator on this line right here, What did I, the, the, the person object that I passed in as a parameter was the left or the right hand side of the equality? It was the right hand side. It was P2 in our main function. The P1, the left hand side was actually whatever the current object was you were calling from. So um, in the case of if we're going to do the operator as a friend function, what are we going to need to pass here now instead? We're going to actually need to pass a person left, either the left-hand side as well as the right-hand side. Okay? So, let's actually go about implementing this. Does everybody have this before I move on? So, we've got a friend function that returns a Boolean to compare a left and a right person. Two, two persons, okay? Sound good? Okay, so I'm going to just copy this. I'm going to go down to where I did the equals operator. Where was that? Right here. I'm going to comment this operator out because I'm not going to use it anymore. And I'm going to start doing my friend function here. Now, because this friend function is an external function, it's not a member of the class, I don't need to put in person double colon, which is the scope resolution operator. I don't have to say this is the equality operator that's defined or resolved and defined in the person class. This is just the operator. This is where it's actually defined. So what I can actually do here now is because this is equal, um, what I can do is I can say return. And of course, because this is a friend function, we don't, oh, sorry, we didn't need to put friend here. Because this is a friend function, we can access directly all the private member variables, right? So we can go return, and we can basically go left dot first name equals right dot first name, and left dot last name equals right dot last name and what left dot age I think that's what I've been doing is equal to right dot age we're going to return this does that make sense everybody does that make sense so the main difference here is is that unlike the other operator we did with equality, because it was a member of the class, it was able to access the left-hand side stuff directly, but the right-hand side, it still had to access the public members. But because we've now made it a friend, that means every person object we pass to it, we can access the private member variables directly. 
Okay. Now, is everybody cool with that? So let's just run this and see what happens. It compiles, oops, and it runs. It says they're not the same, which is, which is what we expect because we've defined down here we're comparing person P1 and person P2. In our case, it's Oscar A. Grouch versus Oscar the Grouch. They're not the same person. They may be related, but they're not the same. So this does work. Now, does anyone, does that make sense to people? Which way did you find easier for the equality to do? Did you find it easier to do it as a friend? Did that make more sense than doing it this way? Yeah, some people get fooled up a little. Some people get fooled up a little bit when you do it as a member function because you have to remember that the left hand side is whatever the current object is and they find it makes a lot more sense to do it as a friend because then you see the left and right objects so it makes a lot more sense to see both of those and know that there's a left and a right keep track of it um, but these both do work now one of the things that's tricky is when you allow a friend function to access uh, private member variables it can also change them right so if I wanted to, I could go in here and I could have changed left dot last name to equal the grouch. Right? And is that allowed? I can do that, can't I? Now, and we can actually see that if I go back and add my print statements back in now. And say this this the grouch was also 20. Actually, I'm not going to add the print statements in. Say that the only difference between these two Oscars was that one was a grouch and the other one was the grouch. If I go in, if I actually wanted to, I could actually change the last name of the left one to be the grouch as well, couldn't I? And what will happen if I do that? It says they're the same. I just made a change directly to one of the objects, right? But do we, did we want the friend function to be able to do that? An equality function shouldn't do that, should it? Devin? It shouldn't, right? So we don't want this to happen. So one of the things that sometimes I like to do, and it's also, there are benefits to it, but for now what I'll tell you is it's just something of personal preference, um, is when I'm dealing with functions like this, like equality, where I know the objects I'm passing in should not be changed, what I'll do is I'll actually make them const. Okay? And what I'll also do is I'll also sometimes I'll pass them in. I also like to pass them in as call by reference when I'm dealing with objects. Const call by reference. It's an option to using a, a non-const call by value. So the other way was call by value. But anyway, this way, here's the thing what we're doing here is, by passing as a call by reference, we don't have to make a copy of all the data that's in the class. We just use a, a reference to it, right? So we, we, only, we don't have to do that. But we can actually, um, by putting it as const, we actually protect somebody from modifying it. So this actually has some performance benefits for us because we don't have to make a copy of left and right. We instead can just refer to the original objects but say that they're const so that they can't be changed. Um, so and if we go down here now into our is equal function here and we did const person left, const person right, if we actually go about now and compile this, we get an error here. And what's the error we get? Actually, sorry, let me just remove this. Oh, cost. What's cost? Should be const. So this will compile. And this will run. 
Now, if we had accidentally did something like this in here, left that last name, what's going to happen when we do this? If we had actually tried to change the name in here when it's a const parameter. Yeah? Yeah, if we now do it, it's actually going to tell me candidate functional not viable has type const, right? But method is not marked const. Basically what it's saying is, is that this function here is is actually making a change to a constant variable, which is not allowed. So you can't do that. So that's an example of the equality operator. Um, I can show you another operator if you want. Um, or would you guys like to do one on your own? Or how do you feel? What? Do you want to do, me to do another example? Or do you want to do one on your own? Okay, I'll do another one. So one of the things that I said would be cool is we have this print function here, right? Void print. But it would be great if we could actually just do display out a person to the standard output. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create another friend function to do this operator. You know when you see this operator in C out? I want to be able to do C out a person and just be able to do that. So I'm going to do a friend function. And it's going to be operator this. Now, here's the thing that's interesting about this one. Um, it takes in as a parameter. What's on the left-hand side of, of this? If I, look at the, if I do a C out, um, the double angled brackets, star P2, where it's a person. What's on the left-hand side of the operator? C out. What is C out actually? It's actually what's called an O stream. Okay, so this is where it's, you have to kind of know a little bit more to do, you can't, for doing the operators, you have to know what you're working with. Um, so it's an, it's an O stream. Um, so that means we actually need to return an O stream here. Okay. In fact, what we're going to do is return a reference to an O stream. Now, we're also going to take in, because CL could have star P2, and then we could have, a string. We can have multiple ones of these in our operators, right? We can have multiple ones in a row, can't we? So because of that, we have to actually pass in the current O stream, display out the person to it, and then pass the O, the o stream with the person displayed out, return it. Okay? So you may think, okay, this is the way I need to do this. O stream, return an O stream, and... Um, Take in a person, okay? Maybe that's what you, th that might make an initial idea of, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. So return an O stream because that's what's on the left and return a, and take in a person because that's what's on the right. So let's go down and implement this in close to our print here. So if we actually did this, I'm going to just display out all of, I'm going to basically just take this whole thing here the whole function for print, I'm going to display it out. But all I have to do now is I just have to do p in front of everything. p dot age, p dot age. Actually, I'm not going to cut and paste. Just to keep it simple for you guys, I don't want to overload anybody. Uh, I'm just going to do a c out where I'm going to go p dot first name. What? Yeah, I, I sorry, I didn't mean to use the word overload. I didn't want to overwhelm anybody. So rather than doing a lot of cut and pasting and modifying, all I'm going to do for this is I'm going to just display out the first name and the last name. Okay? So that's what I would like to do, right? Now, of course, this is an output stream, so what am I actually going to do here? I want to output it, don't I? So actually, this is why you need to have a parameter to take in a parameter here. So right here you actually need to pass an O stream a reference to an O stream let's call it out so you need to do this and that way then when you actually are down here right now you don't know what to display this out to you don't know what output stream because we use those double angle brackets we use them for files don't we we use them for C out we use them for a whole bunch of things 
So we don't know what type of output stream we're going to display this out to, do we? So we need to pass in an output stream as a parameter. So we need to go O stream ampersand out, which is what I done up there. So now what we can do is we can go out P first name, P last name. So what that means is take the person details and put them to the output. Okay? And then we have to do what? We just return the output so that it can be used by the next. Is that, is that okay? I'll give you guys a chance to think about this. Does anyone have questions about this? So the key here is, is that we use these double angled brackets here. We actually use those in a variety of different for a variety a variety of different output streams. We could use it for file, we could use it for standard output, we could use it for others as well, which we haven't learned about. So because of that, we can't just assume this is displayed to see out. So what we have to do is we have to pass in the output stream. So that way if this was a file or something else, we could totally work with it. So we pass in an, the output stream we're dealing with. We display the first and last name to that output stream and then we return it. Okay? And the reason we need to return it is because we could have other things that are being output to the same stream. So we need to return the stream so it can, can be used for other things. So just to show you what I mean by that, if instead of doing print P2, we just did now C out, what would we do here? Star P1. Oops, sorry, star P1, or, st you know, um, we might want to display this out, right? But the thing is, we also might want to display out stuff before and after it. So we may want to display out something like this, right? Where we say comparing person one and person two and then we do the comparison, right? Now, in this output stream, we have a number of these operators. So what we do is we sort of, as we go along, we actually are displaying all these things out, right? So we want to basically add these things along and then output them all. So we want to, because of the fact that there's multiple ones of these, that's why we need to return the output stream. So let's just try this and see. And it says comparing Oscar A. Grouch and Oscar the Grouch. And then it says they are not the same. So our output worked. Yeah? So to relate to Java, this is kind of like using a two string, but you don't have to like, do dot two string or something like that. Right? We could still do a two string if we wanted to. I happen to just be overloading the operator directly. It's just a notational convenience. You could use a two string, you could not. Um, the trickiest thing about this one is the fact that you have this, o, the way you handle the O stream here. Um, that's the trickiest part of this, um, is knowing that you pass in the output stream you're, that you're actually going to print this or send this to. You pass it as a parameter and you also return it. That's the part that's a little bit tricky for people. Um, I'm going to let you guys think about it since we're at the end of class. And then um, if there are any questions, I can actually show you another example of it or work through it on the board to show you exactly what's happening with the operators when we have multiple strings and objects that are being output on the same line. Uh, but that's basically two examples of overloading the equality operator and overloading the um, output operator here with friends. <laughs>